Hi, my name is Sam and welcome to Carl's Performance Garage. On this episode of Shed Sesh, I'm going to be installing the interior and installing a few other little engine bits. If you look now, more's been done to the car and I have got all that recorded, but I just didn't film an intro at the time, so let's get started. Before I continue with the rest of the engine bay, I'm going to start putting some parts back together with the interior. I've got a few pieces like the seats and of course the carpet that aren't in the car. They're taking up room upstairs. So I'm going to just put everything in so it should be nice and ready. So I'm going to put in as much of the interior as I can. Only things I'm not going to put in is pretty much just the dash just because if there is any sort of electrical stuff, that's probably where it's going to happen. If I've missed plugging in a connector or if the ground's a bit dodgy. So I'm not too worried about everything else. But before I put the carpet in, I want to prepare it. Underneath, it's got this padding that helps make it a bit more plushy and soft to your feet. To me, this is just weight. Sure, I could chuck the whole carpet out, but the thing is, it's not really a full track car yet. Plus, if there's no carpet in the car and a policeman goes through my car to then defect me, as soon as they see that there's no carpet, they might want to uh, investigate other areas. So, it's just a very little thing. It just also helps with noise. I'll probably eventually take it out, but for now, we'll stick it in. So, after I've moved all this, I'm going to give it a quick vacuum. Because of the construction inside the shed, it did kind of get coated with sawdust, but a little bit of time with the vacuum cleaner should make it come up 100%, or at least 50. Yeah, 50 is probably better. I've decided to voice over this as it took me a really long time to explain in the video, but instead of throwing the sound editing straight in the bin, I'm going to put it in a container, I'm going to weigh it to see if it will be effective. I've already done this in calves, so I'm interested to see what the result will actually be. So I've plucked it all. I must say my fingers do hurt quite a bit. I don't remember when I did the last ones, they hurt this bad, but yeah, I'm sure you could go through and pick off a lot more, but it's just a never ending cycle. But let's have a quick look to see how much this all weighs. Again, it took me a really long time to explain this in video, so I'm gonna voice over again. I first weighed myself and the container empty, and then I put all the sound deadening back into it and weighed myself with the full container this time. And it ended up weighing 600 grams. So that's not too bad, but is it worth it? Who knows? If you're chasing those grams, 100% do it. So the next step to get this carpet in, I just got to take everything out of the car. So let's get started with that. So before I chuck everything in, I'm just going to give the cabin a quick vacuum and just double check any sort of plugs or connectors. I had a quick initial inspection and everything looks good. So I should be set to go to chuck this carpet in. So, let's get to it. Father called me a son. He never looked at a woman and been totally wrong. Oh my God, put an angel on earth just for you. Just for you. could rescue you from the depths of hell. And you wouldn't know what it's like to be her angel. There we are. Carpet is ready to go in. One thing I'm very glad I did was I clearly labelled 
where all the screws and everything goes. Pretty much any interior bits that have screws or fastenings needed, I just taped them to the actual piece of trim itself so I could never lose it and I knew what went where. So I had a quick inspection, everything looks fine to go so let's put the carpet in. So now with the carpet in and I just quickly did the uh, fuel pump doors and finished installing the fuel pump. I had a new o-ring that only just came so I quickly swapped that out. But now I'm just going to get all of the interior bits, kind of lay them out in their approximate location and then get to work installing them all. As I was tightening the passenger side front seat bolt, it was not going in very easily. And just looking at the threads, they're looking pretty damaged. So I think the actual threads in the mount are a bit damaged. So I'm going to try, do the best I can and repair it by just uh, giving the threads a bit of a clean out with my tap and die set. So just using my thread gauge, I can put it onto the bolt nice and cleanly and there's no gaps. So meaning this bolt has a thread pitch of 1.25 millimeters. Most Subaru bolts have thread pitches of either one millimeter or 1.25 millimeter. I think there's a few that are 1.5, but they're the bolts that are much bigger. So let's find this. I believe this would be a M10. Yes, it is an M10 by 1.25. That's going on nice and cleanly. So just got to get the actual tap. M10 by 1.25. Get a collar thing chuck. That's what it's called. And there we are. I don't think I'll need to extend it, but I'll bring these anyway, just in case. So let's go back to the car and let's clean up these threads. All right, so I'm here at the mount and just looking at it. The threads don't look too damaged, but it's always good to give them a clean up. Now this won't reach, so this tap and die set has got some handy 3 8 extensions, but I'll just put the two extensions together line it up here make sure you are nice and level and just spin so I can just tell by the feel that it was mainly the last few thread uh, the first few threads that were a little stripped so that's not too major because I'm just chasing the thread I'm not really going doing a back half turn so often but you still should, and that should be about right. All right, so unfortunately I don't have my compressor hose, so there we are, good enough below. Put a new bolt and that is going in superbly. Tighten that up. All right, so now tighten it up. 
and there we are. So I put the interior in and got most of it to fit up. It looks like I have misplaced a little part towards the center console with the dash, but I'm not too concerned considering all of this front bit is not going to go in until the car is started and turned on. At least it means I will know that everything works so I can just install everything and hopefully not have to rip this out until I decide to do some other mods which will probably be very soon but who cares it's in it's out of the mezzanine now so time to continue on with some engine work. Now that the interior is in, I'm going to continue doing some work on the engine. I've got a lot of parts to go in, there's a lot of stuff kind of half done. So, gonna try chuck as many parts in tonight and hopefully it will look a lot better. So, I'm just about to start uh, putting in the heater hoses. I'm using old hoses just because that's all I had and honestly they do still feel pretty good. They're not too hard, but one bit of advice is if you dealing with old hoses and you're going to put them back on, boil the kettle and have a container with some hot water. This will help soften up the plastic, meaning that it will A, go on easier, and B, be less prone to actually breaking the hose. Because nothing is worse when you're putting some old hoses on, all of a sudden one split, and then you realize, oh no, that's a two week wait from Subaru because it's an obscure part. So. Just to be cautious, I've got my bucket here. Dump the ends in for a few minutes and they'll be ready to put on. But also be careful because some of the hoses are top heavy and you could spill pretty much the whole container on the floor, which means it's, I now have to clean it up because I have to. All right, so in an earlier shed sesh, I was replacing the fuel lines. Well, mainly these ends that connect to the fuel lines that go to the back, because to get them off, I just uh, sliced them open to pry them off. So I finally got the right size hose. So it's time to measure it up and get it all fitted. So the uh, vapor hose that goes from the engine over to the charcoal canister in the back, I tried to replace with an aftermarket option, but one thing I did not realize is that on OEM, the hole is bigger that goes to the hard line compared to what goes to the fuel rail. So it means that this hose will not fit, so I will have to go get a OEM replacement. So I'm going to install the power steering reservoir along with the hoses. Subaru power steering can be really annoying and really finicky. I highly recommend if you're having any problems with your power steering, it will either be the small little O-ring gasket in, on the top inlet, or it will be one of the hoses and the clamps. As over time, the hoses get really hard and the clamps just can't clamp enough, letting air into the system. Thus, your power steering doesn't work as it's meant to. So if you go to replace your system, or if you're installing it fresh like myself, I highly recommend just buy new hoses and new clamps. OEM is completely fine, and you will not regret it later.
I also didn't film an outro and a bit more has been done since then but I've got all that footage recorded and that will be coming out in some later video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And if you have any suggestions or feedback, please leave it down in the comments below. As always, you can follow me on Instagram at 07carves. And until next time, continue learning.